Welcome back to JRN 3365. This is going to be the third lecture and we're going to be talking a little bit more about the production switcher and we're going to get into a little bit more of what it's able to pull off in some of the technology. So one of the things that the switcher does have are what are called keyers. And keyers are a type of special effect that it can allow for the overlay of different types of video, um, different types of graphics, animations, things like that, that will kind of help your story. And there are many different types of um, overlays that can be superimposed or keyed on top of other layers. So one of the first types of keys is what's known as a mask. And a mask is this little image in the middle that's black and white. So with a mask, I can use the production switcher to tell it which areas of a graphic or a video that I want to be transparent, like these white circles, and which part are, I'm sorry, the black is gonna be the transparent, the white is gonna be the opaque or the see-through part. So when I take this mask and I lay it on top of these uh, the Olympic rings, the production switcher knows to make the background transparent and that wherever the white overlaid on the rings would be opaque so it would wind up showing that animation going on. So you can kind of see on the right how the rings are now being displayed on top of a looping video background. So you can use a mask to do different things. I've even seen a mask where they would take the black and white image and put it over another type of video. So in the background you would have one piece of video going on and then in the shape of the rings or the shape of the cutout you could see a different type of video to give you two different types of effects. Now another type of, of um, keying is what's known as an alpha channel. And an alpha channel is the same concept as a mat with one exception in that instead of having the black and white or the keyer as a separate file, here in an alpha channel it is embedded within the video clip or the photograph itself. So this photograph I can break it up and look at its different layers of red, green, blue, and RGB combined but I can also see an alpha channel and if you notice this particular alpha channel is in the shape of this first block. So that's going to tell me that I'm going to wind up seeing the rock but I'm not going to see the blue sky. So this may be a special effect used for science fiction where they may have like a Martian red sky, but they're going to keep the original rock formation and superimpose it. So with this uh, particular example, I've got a video clip of a dog, and you can kind of see that the next screen, the dog is now surrounded by a red field. Well, this is the alpha channel telling the computer or the switcher which parts of the video to keep and which parts to eliminate. And since the alpha channel can work on a frame by frame basis, that means I can see this dog animate and move without, um, with complete transparency. So they're able to take that and apply it to any type of video or any type of graphics. Now you do have to have a special type of file that can handle a transparency. Things like a JPEG or a PNG have the ability to support that extra channel. Along with files like an MOV QuickTime or an AVI video that again have the ability to have a transparent or an alpha channel in it. Uh, some more traditional photos like um, there are many JPEGs that can't handle transparencies but uh, things like uh, an MP4 or an MP5, things like that, an MPEG video, don't have the ability to support having an embedded alpha channel. So for that, you're going to wind up rendering in a specialized format. Now, one of the things that we can do is with these files and with these transparencies, we can superimpose name graphics, and these are called um, characters, CGs, names. And so as I look at this graphic in the bottom, I can see that it has the traditional checkered pattern of uh, transparency. And so when I take that image and I overlay it on top of video, you can kind of see that it's showing me where the name is kind of appearing and it's sort of fading off. Now with some of these transparencies, it's not always an all or none. You do have the ability to start with something completely opaque and move into things that are more transparent, which is why in this name graphic on the right, I can see how it's starting to blend into her, but you can still see that uh, opacity always staying there. So alpha channels and name graphics are always a great way to put information and things on the screen. 
Now, another thing that we can do with alpha channels are also for photographs. So we'll use this as a type of shot I talked about earlier called an OTS or a key shot in over the shoulder graphic. So in this, I have an image that has a solid area for a photo that I want to use, but then the outside elements are partially transparent. So this gives me the ability to incorporate this graphic into parts of my set. And when we're setting up the anchor shot, you can see that for the camera operator, there's an empty space next to them. So through the ability of the production switcher, I'm able to superimpose or key that shot roughly over their shoulder. So we're able to use an alpha channel in this uh, particular image. So this was a PNG with the embedded alpha channel to incorporate that image into what we're using. Now, another type of shot that I talked about uh, with the previous graphics are what are called key shots or OTS for over the shoulder. And they don't always involve an alpha channel or a keying technology. So when I look at this, I can see in the upper left and the bottom right, my two anchors have the, or my two talents, have a graphic that is being superimposed over the shoulder using the production switcher. But in the opposite corners, the upper right and the bottom left, my talent or my anchors have a monitor behind them that is displaying that graphical information. So what they wind up doing is they both, or all four of them you'll see, they have the talent on one side of the screen, but there's room allocated for the production switcher to either embed a photo in front of them or they can use a set dressing such as a monitor behind them to display that graphic information. Now, we can also take uh, key ears and we can add them in multiple layers. So we have a segment in our show called News From Around the State, where we would have a camera that would have a talent with a over the shoulder position. I'd have an animated video that has an alpha channel that you can see here in black. And then I've got another piece of text that has a name and a picture of the state with um, a story uh, or a slug where the story is. And this checkered pattern tells me that this area is completely transparent. So as I go in and I layer these multiple keyers on top of each other, I have my talent. You can see the animated background. And then you can also see the locator graphics. So we're able to do multiple effects at one time to pull off something that we want for our news, whether it is news from around the state, weather maps, sports keys, or anything along those lines. Now, the last type of key we're going to talk about is what's known as a chroma key. And a chroma key is where we take a particular color and remove it from a video source, if it's an image, a camera, a background. And a lot of times you'll also hear this as a green screen or a blue screen, since those are the two most common colors that we use for king. And the reason why we pick green or blue is because those two colors don't naturally exist in human skin pigmentation. So in this, in this image, you notice that my talent is actually wearing a blue dress, but that's not a problem because our production switcher in this case is keying out only the green color. So the production switcher is taking that out and we've replaced the background with a video animation that has um, a, a wall behind her and this monitor has a moving logo. And because this set doesn't exist in the physical world, it gives us the ability to change multiple sets in such a small environment as well as uh, the cost of building multiple sets of this scale. We can do it easily in a photo manipulation program like Photoshop or things like that. And the green screen gets a lot of uses in many varying locations. So a lot of times for television news, they'll be using the green wall for segments like weather that you can see in this studio shot. And in the bottom right, you can see a weather anchor is looking at a weather map and a monitor. Special effects in movies will show green screen technology or blue screen. And I've even seen it in like music videos where they want to do some really cool special effects. So by having the chroma key, you're able to transport your talent to a location or a place that they normally couldn't go or go very easily. And so with the creation of the green screen, we're able to create a variety of sets and a variety of locations. And these are called virtual sets because they do not exist in the real world. And here's just a couple examples of the virtual sets that we use. Uh, for this top one, I have what appears to be a, um, a gentleman in a studio that's on like the second story over a, uh, a quad shot that's happening through a window behind him. But where we are physically located, this 
this facility does not exist. I just have a camera that's shooting a live action. This camera's uh, mounted on a pole shooting in that area. Likewise, I talked about the virtual set with the wall. This is another one where we have a gentleman standing in front of a computer generated background to um, show you something along the lines of data, forensics, or some technology that they are using. Now, the next part of the production switcher that can provide some really powerful use is what's called the DVE or the digital video effects. And this is a part of the switcher that lets us take a single input and we can shape it, change it, move it around in three dimensions. We can uh, place it, make it smaller, make it bigger and use it for a variety of uses. So for our DVE, I have, you see a video of a person that's, that's angled. And so for this shot, you would see them full screen and then the effect, it'd like shrink it and then like throw it over the anchor shoulder. Well, the DVE or the digital video effects is giving them that ability. Another use that we see it a lot in is what's called a split screen, where I can take multiple sources and put them on the same screen at the same time. And so our DVE is able to take this one screen and it can split it up into two segments by easily putting a divider between them or cropping out the sides. And then it can take that, superimpose them over a background, and you're able to pull off an effect like a live shot. So something I have here would be a, a reporter that is about to give a live interview. And we can take him, shrink him down, and put him on the screen. And using multiple keyers and multiple layers, I can pull off a, a very nice looking shot. I've got an animated background, I've got a DV image on the left, I've got a second DV image on the right, and I've got graphics like a studio and on location. I've got a story title that can be keyed from a name graphic. So for this one element, I may have four or five or six keyers used all at the same time. And one of the things I'd mentioned with the DV is you're able to take an image and you can make it a lot bigger or you can shrink it really tiny. So in uh, this example, there's a, a talent person or an anchor sitting on a green wall and they are able to be superimposed on a screen. Now, one of the things they were able to do was to buy a second virtual set and they could shrink that person down even smaller and put them further in the back. So while this person is standing in a room that may be no bigger than an average office, they're able to use the DV and make it look like they have a two story or three story studio that they are able to put them in and um, show off a lot of varieties and different shots that they came with a virtual studio that you really couldn't with a normal studio. And so that's just a quick look at the production switcher and the keyers and the DVE and some of the special effects that it has incorporated into it to pull off a wide variety of production.